Intentional Excellence Podcast, Episode 16. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Teach Me to Code Podcast. This is Charles Max Wood, and uh, this week I'm going to be just, you know, same, same deal. I'm going to be talking about some of the stuff that I've got going on. Um, one of the things that uh, I think a lot of people have been following uh, that I've been doing is the Ruby Rogues podcast, and I really want to jump into that. Um, in fact, you probably recognize the music since it's the intro music for that one as well. Um, basically, the Ruby Rogues podcast it was it was something that uh, was kind of born out of an idea. Um, I, I, I'd been toying with the idea for a while of putting together some kind of a Ruby panel where I would get together a bunch of Ruby people and we would talk about programming in Ruby. And the cool thing is, is that uh, I, I kept thinking about it and toying with it and never really did anything about it. And then a friend of mine, his name is James Edward Gray, uh, he came down and he said, he said, hey, um, I'm seriously thinking about putting together a panel. <laughs> he posted it on Twitter. And I was like, hey, me too. And so I started contacting people and before I knew it, I had five interested, interested and interesting people willing to talk about programming in Ruby. So um, that that was just way cool. It was it was really fun. Um, we've put out two episodes so far, and it's it's a little bit different dynamic than I'm used to with most of my podcasts because all the rest of them I just do by myself. I mean, so uh, teach me to code podcast. I've been doing a lot of interviews, and I you know I can I can totally see where um, you know where I I just kind of set the the tone and the feel for the podcast, but where there are um, where there are a bunch of other people on the podcast, it's a little bit different. We're trying to find our footing. Um, the first podcast was a lot of fun. We, it, it was really kind of a panel discussion. Uh, we had a good time talking about Ruby. Uh, we had a great time talking about a, a whole bunch of other stuff and it, it was really good. Um, the second one we brought on kind of a domain expert on the knowledge that we were trying to share and it kind of turned into an interview and Honestly, uh, for a panel of five, having uh, two or three people asking the other one person all the questions, it just wasn't as fun. So uh, anyway, it, it's interesting to kind of find find our place and 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 make the most of that. So I'm really excited to see where it goes today because we're talking about something that people have an opinion on and that there really isn't a clear domain expert. I mean, we could bring somebody in and ask them. You know, how did you build it this way? Why did you build it this way? But ultimately, when it comes down to it, you know, the, the discussion is over. What are you using? Why are you using it? And why am I an idiot? Or why are you an idiot for, you know, not using what I'm using kind of thing? And so it should be fun. And, and we've been having kind of a mock flame war over Twitter to get people interested. And it. it's just been a lot of fun. Um, one other thing that, that I've had some success with, oh, and, I, and the reason I mention this is, you know, I'm just, I'm just throwing out a bunch of stuff that I've had wins on. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up the stats for that uh, podcast, the Ruby Rogues podcast, um, because it, it really has taken off. I mean, it, it's gotten a ton of, of downloads and, and a ton of traffic, so... Let's see. I'm logging into Libsyn, and uh, I'll I'll go ahead and pull up my analytics too. But anyway, um, last time I checked it, it had over five thousand downloads in two weeks. Uh, it's loading it up now, so we're at fifty five oh eight. Um, uh, uh, just on the downloads. Uh, if you if if I come down and actually look at the stats. Uh, the first episode, which is the one that I really enjoyed both recording and listening to, there were 34, 3,428 downloads, and then the, the next one had 2,080 downloads. And that, that second one is just a week old. Um, if we come over here to the stats, um, let's see. Uh, it looks like the traffic's down a little bit today. It should pick up once we post a new episode. But let's go ahead and just pull up over the last 14 days because that's all it's been up. And so over the last 14 days, we've had 9,967 view page views and five from 5,229 visitors. So, I mean, it, it's really just gone 
huge over the last two weeks. And uh, it, it, it should be a lot of fun to get the next one out there. Um, and and I, I honestly think it's going to be interesting because last time there was quite a difference of opinion. And people were semi-cordial to each other, you know, as far as, oh, well, I guess if that works for you. But, you know, at the same time, there was enough dissent among the different uh, panelists to where it was it was really interesting and educational to hear what everyone's view was and why. So anyway, um, I'm just going to go ahead and jump down to the next thing because it was another big win for me. Um, I was this week is RailsConf or the it's the big Ruby on Rails conference back in Baltimore. And the funny thing is, is that I, I really wanted to go, but it just it didn't work out anyway. So um, I've been I've been kind of wishing that I'd gone. And then I got mentioned, I think it was yesterday or maybe Tuesday. I don't remember. But they they were handing out the Ruby Hero Awards and the Ruby Hero Awards are basically um, recognition of people who have given something uh, to the community. I'm going to turn my voice down a little bit. looks like it might be peaking. And uh, anyway, so these people have given back. Usually it's in the form of code, not always. Um, but anyway, I'm pretty sure if I had won a Ruby Hero Award, then I would have been notified and probably gotten a ticket to the conference. But uh, anyway, um, so Greg, who, who uh, he was probably one of the first big podcasters in, in the Ruby on Rails area. Um, he actually got up and he was talking about uh, he was talking about giving back to the community after he'd handed out all the awards. And he, he was mentioning, you know, there's been Rails casts and, you know, David Heinemeyer Hansen kind of started the whole screencasting craze with the screencast on how to build a blog in Rails. And, you know, just stuff like that. There, you know, there was quite a bit of, there have been videos and videos and videos made um, on Ruby and related topics. And he listed a whole bunch of them. And I'm sitting there going, oh, well, I didn't get mentioned. And then he stopped and he looked at him and he said, and Charles Max Wood at Teach Me to Code has done a ton of awesome work. I mean, he just stopped dead and, and just let everybody know that I was doing awesome work, which I mean, I, I don't know that I'm necessarily doing it for the accolades, but at the same time, it's really nice to hear that people are getting something out of what I'm putting out there and that, that some people appreciate it. And so... I mean, you know, a pat on the back if you have a podcaster or uh, you know, you're just somebody that you, you listen to or pay attention to or watch or read their blog or whatever, you know, just leave them a note that says, hey, thanks for putting this out there. It really, you know, help me with this or even just I really like it. I mean, you know, it, it's great feedback and it really, really helps. And no, I'm not fishing for compliments. I want you to go and do this for the other guys that are out there doing this stuff. So my third big win, <laughs> and uh, trust me, there there are only a few more of these, but uh, it's just you know big win, big win, and and that's probably what I'm going to call the this episode is just big win, big win. Anyway, um, so I had I had my site go down on Saturday or Friday, I don't remember. Um, and you're, you're probably thinking is the that's a big win. Well, what happened was um, I've I'd been hosting it over at. Uh, silverrack.com for a while and it just i don't know um i i know the guy that started it his name's dave he's a local guy here and the problem was that uh you know getting getting help from their support i mean can take up to a few hours and my site was down it was legitimately down it was responding very very slowly and so anyway i went and i migrated it off of silverrack and onto linode.com and the funny thing was that as soon as I put it on my Linode account, that server went down. Uh, and I was just like, holy cow, what is going on? Um, wh which may have caused a blip on my other websites, incidentally. Um, and I, but I was just, I was, I was flabbergasted. I was like, are you kidding? What is the deal? And so I went and checked on, uh, on my analytics. I'm using uh, clicky analytics. Uh, that's getclicky.com. And, uh, Anyway, so I went and looked, and I had gotten, like, I don't even remember, um, but I had gotten way more traffic than I have ever gotten before on my website. In fact, let me switch sites here since I have it up. I pulled it up for the other um, for the other podcast, so I'll just switch over here, 
and uh, I can I can tell you I had um, on May thirteenth, which was Friday or Saturday, I don't remember. I think it was Friday. Uh, I had I had two thousand one hundred and twenty nine visitors, and uh, boy, I don't even know how many page views, but it it, it was up there. It, it was a lot more than I usually get in a day. In fact, it's got this huge peak uh, right in the middle of the two weeks that I'm showing here. And um, anyway, so, you know, really fascinating. I, I got so much traffic that it brought the server down. So I moved it over to Linode and it brought that server down. So I actually upgraded the server. So anyway, um, since then, I've, I'm still getting uh, traffic for this. Um, I've, I've gotten a lot of traffic over the last two weeks for my last two videos. They have each gotten about 2,800... Uh, hits a piece, but the one that the one that got hit the most was uh, uh, Coffee script the cool parts is what I called it and I just went over a couple of the things that I really like about coffee script uh, Which is a JavaScript drop-in uh, Replacement that compiles to JavaScript if you're not a technical person. Don't worry about it. It's a video that shows you how to program stuff um, Anyway, it was really really cool. Um, I got featured on the front page of hacker news which is a link sharing site uh, put up by Y Combinator, which is a, uh, it's kind of like Boom Startup if you've heard me talk about them, uh, except they're out in California. And they're kind of the, the, one of the big ones that, that everybody knows about if you're looking into that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, it, it was really interesting. I got featured on, I was on the front page. I was number like 28 out of 30, but I was still on the front page. So I was getting just tons, gobs, gobs of traffic. And uh, anyway, so I wound up upgrading my server and everything's fine, everything's happy. Now the funny or the funny or ironic thing is is that I had a client that had the same problem come Tuesday. Um, they weren't featured on Hacker News or really anywhere. Uh, when we looked at their analytics, it looked like 30% of their traffic was coming from Facebook, which means that somebody was out there sharing their um, sharing their article and I don't I don't know what what the deal is or why but anyway basically um, it was just it was really just kind of nutty um, the the whole thing was going down and so anyway it turned into this whole mess because uh, I, I, I went in and I upgraded their server eventually because the, the page was down it was just it was non-responsive so I went in and I upgraded and it said on on Engine Yard, and I'm going to totally bash him for a second, um, but it said, we'll take a snapshot and we'll reload your server from the snapshot, which to me says, we're going to copy all the data on your server and then we're going to bring your server down and then we'll bring it right back up with more memory and, you know, more resources on it, right? Not the case. So when they brought it back up, all the data was missing from that day which meant that all the comments on that blog post were missing from that day. All the people who had signed up on the website to, uh, to make a comment uh, on that day were gone. So I, I wound up spending three hours yesterday re-entering all those comments and, and connecting them to the proper users. And oh, let me tell you, what a headache. And, and I wound up just kind of shimming in or stubbing out the users. So, you know, I, I don't quite know what the consequences are going to be of that, but they wanted the, the comments in there so badly that, that, you know, they were willing to just take anything to do it. And, you know, I don't blame them. I mean, comments on your blog or website are kind of a big deal. So anyway, um, if you want to check them out, they're thebolditalic.com. Um, and you have to have the in front of it, thebolditalic.com. And then um, if you click on, I think it's what it means to be San Franciscan or to be in SF or something like that. Um, and they're kind of a local interest, San Francisco. You can think of them as kind of an online newspaper. They're much more that than, you know, some of the other online news organizations are. So anyway, um, that, you know, my site went down and then their site went down like three days later. But anyway, it's back up. It's got about double the memory, uh, double the swap. It's It should be running just a ton faster. So um, I'm really excited to see where things go from here. Um, another thing is, is there's the, there, I've been thinking about starting up another podcast. So I've got uh, 
Intentional Excellence Podcast, uh, Rails Coach Podcast, Teach Me to Code Podcast, Teach Me to Code Screencasts, and I'm seriously considering starting a new podcast. And that podcast would be the Wheel of Time Fan Podcast. And this, I, I want to talk about it for a minute. Um, it's kind of the same deal as uh, what uh, Cliff and Stephanie Ravenscraft do on... Um, uh, they they have the Twilight Fan Podcast, and what was the other one that they had? The Hunger Games Fan Podcast. And uh, they're just kind of going through the books and talking about this stuff. Um, but the Wheel of Time has 13, 14, 13 or 14. Anyway, there are 13 or 14 books in the series right now. Um, I didn't do any research for this podcast, but that's okay. I never do. Uh, let's see. Wheel of Time. So let's see. Um, there are 14 books. Uh, 13, 13 have been published, and the 14th one um, is due in early 2012, is what it says. And uh, Brandon Sanderson has been writing the last couple. He's actually here local to me. He, he lives in Provo, which is like 20 or 30 minutes away. Um, anyway... And, and he actually has a podcast, too. It's called Writing Excuses. I'll have to put a note of that in the show notes. Anyway, uh, just a, it's been a, a super um, it's a super series. I, I actually haven't read the last uh, two or three books um, that have been published. So anyway, um, just to throw that out there, uh, the books have all gotten kind of progressively longer. Um, I'm really looking forward to how this is going to kind of come to a resolution and uh, tie all the storylines back together because there are a ton of them and there are a lot of themes that run through them. And so I think it would be really interesting to explore them, um, not just from the this is a cool fantasy story, but kind of from a philosophical or even maybe religious um, uh, point of view and just say, you know, there there are these aspects of this um this group's religion and it's kind of like this in the real world and it has these parallels to this and you know it, it would it would be fascinating for me to just talk through it and so i may get one uh, one or two other people and see if we can put something together and and do a weekly podcast on that i think it would be fun if you're a wheel of time fan, fan send me an email chuck at teach me to code.com let me know um what your interest level is you know i'd like to be a panelist i'd like to be um i would listen if you made it you know, just whatever. Um, I would really, really uh, appreciate any feedback on that. Um, one other thing that I've got going on is uh, the running. I, I've been talking about this for a while. Um, I, I quit running for probably a week or so. And then this week I've actually made it twice. I went this morning and I went Tuesday morning. Tuesday was really hard. Um, and Friday, last was it Friday? I think it was last Friday, was really hard. I mean, it was just... Yeah, yeah major fail for me. Um, I, I just didn't have the energy to do it. And so, um, on Friday, I, I actually ran week four, uh, exercise set one and the last there, it, it's a five minute run and then a three minute run and then a five minute run and, or a three, no, it's three, five, three, five. So it's three minutes, five minutes, three minutes, five minutes. And I don't remember how long the breaks are in between. Um, I think they're a minute and a half, two minutes and a half, minute and a half, two minute and a half. Um, anyway, um, the sad thing was that I just, I couldn't finish that last five minutes. Um, I got about two minutes in and I almost fell off the treadmill. So I just went back down to a walk, um, which was really disappointing for me because I, I really want to stick these out. Anyway, I went in on Tuesday and went running and I, I couldn't even do it. I couldn't run at all. Um, I, you know, it was like I was recovering from, you know, uh, it was like I hadn't slept. So anyway, I wound up walking for 30 minutes. And then today when I went and ran, I actually rolled back to, um, to week three workout two. And I made it all the way through that, which includes two, three minute runs and two one and a half minute runs, I think. Anyway, so I, I feel a ton of ton better. I think what I'm probably going to do is just try and make it every morning. And on my off mornings, I'm just going to walk, slowly walk. 
and uh, you know just see how that goes. So anyway, that that's kind of where I'm at, you know. So I had a success today, big win, another big win, but you know uh, after a couple of fails. Uh, this weekend was actually a lot of fun, though, and, and I think this might be part of the problem. Uh, this weekend, this last weekend, was the Fathers and Sons outing. Um, it's something that, uh, I don't know if it's an LDS phenomena or if it's something else, but anyway, m- m- I took my son camping is basically what it is with my uh, with my church group, and we went up to Five Mile Pass. There's nothing there. And, uh, you know, slept on the ground and all that. And, you know, they had, they had a big, uh, big fireside and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, then we came home and then we went to the zoo <laughs> with, with my, uh, with my sister-in-law and her husband and, and, and their little boy. Cause it was his birthday or it was his birthday on Tuesday. We went on Saturday and, uh, anyway, so it's been, it, it, it was a really fun, but taxing weekend too and I think that might have been part of the problem was just that I had no recovery time because I I went running on Friday and then I slept on the ground that night and I I think I just had to recover recuperate a little bit so anyway um you know lots lots going on um I have freed up my evening some the the rails course I think it's over I think it got over last week because I haven't heard anything from anybody and, um, anyway, so I'm expecting a check for that, but, uh, it freed up a lot of my evenings cause I was spending my evenings trying to make up, uh, for not having some of the lesson material done. And, uh, anyway, that, that it, it's been kind of nice. I've been able to spend some time with my wife and, and do some things that I haven't been able to do. Um, though last night she wasn't feeling well, so she, she wound up laying down and I just can't be cooped up in our bedroom from seven o'clock on, it just doesn't work for me. So I came in here and I actually sat down and coded on, I've been working on teach me to code.com, uh, building it out in rails. Uh, I, it's on WordPress right now. It's driving me crazy. And, uh, so anyway, so I've been playing with, uh, with, uh, developing my own teach me to code.com website. And it, it's been, it's been fun. It, it's, I, I kind of think of it as my own code therapy, <laughs> which is, kind of what it is i mean you know i sit down and i code on something that's low key i'm not under any pressure to get it done uh other than the fact that wordpress is driving me freaking bonkers um but you know it's something that i can do it's something that i can work on it's low key it's low pressure and it's something that i enjoy so i'm i'm really really excited to uh to see where it goes I, i have a few more things to do with it i need to put a little bit more polish on it um, there were a few frustrations with it, but you know, ultimately I, I think it's going to work out and it's going to be a whole lot nicer than dealing with freaking WordPress. Anyway, that, that's about all I have going on. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what you want to hear about from me. So, uh, I will leave that up to you. Uh, you can call me at 801-367-6164. If you have a website that you want built, or you need help, you know, in one way or another, I'm happy to do that for you. Just give me a call. Send me an email, chuck at teachmetocode.com. If you're interested in the Wheel of Time podcast, definitely, definitely give me a call. 801-367-6164. And, uh, you know, or you can Skype me. My Skype username is GigaChuck, G-I-G-A-C-H-U-C-K. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash cmaxw. Um, I would also appreciate it. Um, this podcast doesn't have as many listeners as some of my other podcasts. Not that I really mind, but you know, if you do listen to this or my other podcasts, go into iTunes and leave a review. That would be just super. Um, and finally, you know, go out, find your, uh, your podcasters or bloggers that you follow and tell them thanks for all their hard work. Um, a lot, a lot of us don't do it for money, you know, or maybe just some small amount of money in, in sponsorships. And I think it would make a difference for them. So, you know, go tell them thanks. Let them know that you appreciate it. And uh, I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks. And, And go out there. Be intentional. Be excellent. Have a big win. Thanks.